Alexa, increase the volume. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Encounters, the short edition. It's a daytime edition of Encounters in the Space Room. Yeah, today we're in the Space Room. Shea 83, Marino, Chesno, good to see you. Good morning, everybody. Runic Lamb, Mr. B. Good morning, everybody. Melissa Hurd, living on the level good to see you everybody coming in here scott hammond good to see you all the people coming in here this is the morning edition game vet good to see you as well so uh, shay 83 thank you uh grand rising scott <clears throat> thank you so much for the love uh bry good to have you with us good morning Rain2670, good morning, good morning, Catherine, good morning, everybody. Tamaris, good morning. Got some enigma in the background. We're in the meditation space room today <coughs> for a Friday. <coughs> Excuse me. Stacy, good morning. And we had a very super show last night, to say the least. Lady Big Fish, Lacey Big Fish, good to see you. Uh, thank you. We're doing well. We're doing very well here. Good morning, Colleen. Good morning, everybody coming in here from all over the place. Wherever you are on the planet, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one of the one of my space tools here, as you can see. My thumb fits right in it. When I found this, it was like an activated tool. This was years ago, I got this one. And my thumb, it's cut for my thumb. It's naturally cut that way. So good morning, everybody. This is a real powerful crystal. Ah, uh, oh, good. Game of it. Yeah, if you can send me some video footage, we'd love to see it. So the commander's always amped up. Over 20 years, a lot of my crystals come from the Big E at the East Coast German Mail Show, the biggest show on the East Coast. And um, the commander's always guided me to crystals that are activated, very high frequency. So you're probably feeling some of the energy. And just to show you they have energy, I'm gonna do this to the screen. I'm not gonna hit the phone or anything. I'm going to send some energy to all the beautiful people out here on the morning show here on Encounters. Because everyone deserves some good energy. Always. Good energy. Cosmic energy. Kristen, good to see you. Grand Rising. That's one of my crystals. I got many, many crystals here. You know? I worked with crystals now way back then. Oh, good, Bonnie. Dennis, good to see you. Looks like you're blessing us with holy water. <laughs> and it's a cosmic water. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a holy cosmic water, the crystals. My crystals are just all amped up. I use them in my workshops as well. But uh, welcome to Encounters, everybody. We'll be on for a little bit today. This morning, anyway, till about 10.30. So about an hour show. Uh, Audrey, good to see you. Welcome everybody coming in here. Thank you for the uh, gift of the earth. We love that. And uh, like I said, we uh, last night on our show, for those that missed it, that show will be added on to my YouTube channel, Astro Command Spaceship News Encounters, and also on Facebook. So I haven't posted it yet, but I'll try to post it before I leave this morning. Uh, you'll hear, um, I'm going to talk about <clears throat> that we, uh, the other day in the Midwest, shot off a rocket to with a man in it, with an Air Force pilot. It went to Jupiter in 25 minutes. Jupiter is over 178,000 plus thousand miles from Earth. Okay. 
And in 25 minutes, the Air Force pilot in this uh, craft went to the out, outlying area of Jupiter, just uh, on the craft. They were testing it. And then they came back within 25 minutes. Okay. And this is top secret information that I, uh, I'm sharing with you because it was exposed by our DOD contact the other night. I'm shy. Um, also, the other day, IBM missiles were being moved from one uh, base, military base, to another. And in that time, and you'll hear about it on the show last night, it's because recorded, uh, three UAPs, diamond-shaped spaceships, were monitoring the movement of these IBMs in the United States. So essentially what I'm saying is our galactic forces of light are very concerned and watching every movement we make uh, with things. Uh, Alexa, turn the volume down. So they're very aware of what we're doing, especially now. And uh, very good. welcome to the show, everybody coming in here. Please share and like. Uh, that's really important to do. Real Talk, welcome to the show. LJ, welcome to the show. So there's movement abound, and our space forces, our cosmic space forces, our galactic space forces are actually monitoring every detail of what happens. Yeah, it was 768,000 miles. Um, yeah, 768,000 miles. Thank you, D. I had my notes written down last night, but I'm not in that room. But... Um, but still, 25 minutes, and that's uh, quite a short time period, you know? Brandon, welcome to the show. Uh, and this is what we're dealing with. We have technology. Uh, we, we get on in the mornings when I can. So I'm trying to do some daytime uh, programs here as well in the meditation room, space room. So this is, uh, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. Alexa, play me ambient meditation music. Playing ambient meditation We're going to change the sounds. Okay, without words. You know, so, and uh, Fig Newton Liver, good to have you with us on Encounters, the morning show. I don't have the green screen on this morning. I'm just straight out in the meditation room here. Makes me wonder how many times they did the trip unmanned. I don't know how many times. I you know I would probably ask uh, our DOD contact tonight when she's on. That's a great question. But they've done over 30 missions manned going out and they come back within 25 minutes, which is pretty crazy. Well, got to do work. Uh, Bonnie, have a good day. And we'll talk to you later. See you later on our nighttime show. Welcome to the show, Jody. Now, Piper, welcome to Encounters. If you have a story to tell regarding visitations, UFO sightings, and you have over 200 followers, you can now go on TikTok with your audio, not yet with your camera, but if you want to come on here and share some stories, we'd like to hear them. Anybody got stories to share? share any video footage they want to talk about that we're recording? We'd like to hear your stories. Just follow the little icon. There's like a guest icon. Press that you want to be a guest. And I'll see you light up on the screen. And then I can just bring you right in here. So we're looking for people to share. Um, usually on my nighttime shows, we have around 200 people a night on our nighttime broadcast. So because people don't know we're on during the morning sometimes, the numbers will be a little bit less. Liz Contreras, 675. Welcome to our show. So this is Encounters, a show, I'm a contactee, I've been a contactee since the 60s with uh, space people that are men, women, and children that look just like us, and my sighting when the mid-60s happened was uh, telepathically communicated by them to me that I wasn't from this planet. And uh, not only that, after that happened, I had sightings, I've been having sightings for years, two of which in Connecticut, one of the two were was a really big ship, about two football f fields in length. And uh, that, unfortunately, we didn't have internet. Uh, you know, we didn't have these kind of cell phones. I had no way of recording anything. And it was just 
one of those things. I'm also telepathic. I read energy. When people tell me the stories, I get information for them regarding their ET visitations. And uh, I do workshops and I take people off planet into a golden ship of light and people keep a journal of what they're doing. Ah, Shay. Hello. Good morning, Shay. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Can you come on camera? You, you have the ability to go live with a camera. Do you know how to use it? Yeah. Yeah, we'd love to have you on. There we are. All right. Good morning, yeah. Shay. There you go. There you go. So we're, what part of the planet are you in? I am in um, Pacific Northwest, U.S. Oh, oh beautiful. Washington. That's a beautiful place. Oh, really beautiful. Yeah. And I know you got a story to tell, so good morning. And it's earlier out there than where I am here, so go ahead. A little bit. <laughs> um, so I had an encounter when I was really young, probably about five or six. And mm -hmm. um, I had my bed would shake at times, and then I would see lights out my window. And then there was one time that I saw what I – would say was an actual being at my window. Mm. But the interesting thing was it was wearing a hat. It was wearing That's a hat. What, yeah. Wow. That's what was really interesting to me. Because, you know, I'd seen all sorts of pictures and whatnot of what gray aliens look like. And it was it was similar, but not exact. Um, mm. But it was wearing like a big floppy hat. That was what was really interesting to me. Wow. And what did it look like? Did you have any kind of idea of what it looked like? or? So if I'm describing, you know, a, a gray alien, you got the big eyes, you got the small mouth, um, yeah. but it also looked like it had wrinkles on its face, like an old lady. Okay. An old lady. That's interesting, kind of E.T. I don't know where that E.T. came from. Did, what, were you feeling any energy from it at all, um, I would assume? Um. I don't know. It was like a two second viewing that I had of this thing. And I was more curious than anything. And the other feelings I got was that I was not real. I did not just see that. But, you yeah. know, after all these years, <laughs> and it's still there as a very real memory, I've, I've got to believe yeah. that I saw it. Oh, you did. Because just like I tell people with my contact experience when I was a kid, I went up to my brother's room. My parents and brother were downstairs. We lived in Long Island in a cul-de-sac. And I went upstairs for no reason. <clears throat> I just felt I had to go upstairs. And why would I go upstairs as a kid for no reason? Um, but I did. <coughs> Excuse me. And so when I went upstairs, I went to my brother's room, not my room, opened the wood shades. And in the cul-de-sac, it was kind of foggy. It was weird. And there was a saucer-shaped spaceship. I kind of tinted a little bit. I can see these were tinted for lack of a better word for it. But the men, women, and children had space suits on. They like uh, were bluish kind of glitter, like they glitter. Uh, and they had a control center was blinking like crazy. So for me, based on what you're saying, like not, not forgetting your experience, I've never forgotten what they told me. They were telepathic. They said, you're not from here. You're with us. Uh, we are a cosmic family. That's always what I remember them saying. And I went downstairs trying to get my rest of my family to come up. I was excited. Nobody came up. And I have a feeling the reason years later I, I, I look back at it, it wasn't for them to see. It was for me to see because I was connected with them, you know, just like you just said. You don't forget a real experience. You never can, you know. So it's real. What you had was a real experience. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I just didn't know if maybe you could shed some light on uh what reasons I might be encounter having an encounter. Well, the thing is what I want to know is how you felt for that split moment that you saw that being looking, you know, with the hat on. Um, well, I wasn't scared. It was just a, wow, I can't believe I actually just saw that. Right. You, well, your mind's saying you can't believe it, but you, your eyes saw what you saw. It yeah. was there. It wanted you to see it, even if it was for a few. You might have seen it longer, 
Had your mind not told you, I can't believe what I saw. The mind is trying to logically, the mind does something when people have experiences like this. The mind tries to be logical and tells you, no, that can't be possible. You didn't see that. You didn't see it. But your inner spirit or your higher self says, you did see it. It's talking to you. Your higher spell, uh, spirit is you. Your higher self is you. So it's saying to you, oh, I did see it. You know, I did have that experience. And so in many ways, and, and probably the dog is like saying, I want to be on TV too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a good energy dog. Um, but, you know, when you have that experience, you don't forget it. You never can. The thing is, when you had that experience and saw that specific spaceship, that ET craft, um, did you, you, you weren't afraid. You didn't feel, like you just said, you didn't feel any negativity. So who knows? I'm not trying to think where that being came from. Uh, and I'm still not, re- you, you know, figuring that out yet. I will figure it out in usually a few minutes. But you had an experience. Have you had any encounters of any sort since uh, that period? Um, I've had all have. sorts of uh, like uh, telepathic encounters, yeah, um, but nothing physical since then. That's okay. Telepathic, being a tele- a telepathic communicator is really good. I mean, if you can be telepathic, you are able to communicate with space beings. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, can you explain some of the telepathic things you had happen? Is it related to the cosmic levels? Have you talked to space people um the last time i actually um was very open to a communication um i was given all sorts of different information about who we are what we are why we're here kind of thing Mm -hmm. and after that i just kind of felt at peace like i needed to spread this information Mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't want to hear the information so, well, that's because people are kind of weird that way. I mean, things have changed a lot. They're more open now than they were 30 years ago. You'll find the right people that want to hear you where you are. They are there. They are, they live there. But you'll just have to seek them out. You'll, they might even be in our encounters broadcast, some of them in Washington State. We do have, actually, people that view this in Washington State. So you'll this will be a place. Also, one of the things about my show is it's to bring people together in different states that are near each other so you can have some you know, community of light um, to share. And that one of, that's one of the concepts of the show is not just being a UFO spiritual talk show, but to bring people together. And that's that's really my main goal. So now when you had the, the communications, did they say who they were? Because that's always a really, if they haven't told you that, you can always ask them, where are you from? Uh, what planetary system? Are you Christed beings of light? I always ask them, are they Christed beings of light? You want to know that because this way you know what frequency they're operating at. If they don't answer your question, so I need to know that because else we cut off communications. If they're, because they're Christ of beings of light, that means that they're working for the higher, you know, levels of, uh, you know, good things in terms of positive uh, changes and interactions with the populations that they communicate with. So can you expand on that a little bit? Maybe I guess my question is, can, did they tell you anything about who they are? When I asked about, um, I get all sorts of different um, answers when I ask who I'm talking to, um, but the one that comes out a lot is uh, Philomona. Philomona. Yeah. And That's who is Philomona? Can you explain what Philomona, who Philomona is, where Philomona is from, or? No, that's just the name of contact I get, and mm-hmm. not really much more information than that. So I'm going to give you some guidance here, which is what I do. I like to help people ask, say that you want, ask for a date. So the space people, if you don't ask them directly a question, not that they don't want to answer it, they won't know how to communicate that answer. But you need to ask Philomona, what planet are you from? Okay. And then ask Philomona, do you understand who the cosmic Christ is? These are very key direct questions, and they'll answer them. So I'd love to hear those answers the next time you're in telepathic communications. Okay. And also ask them if they would come, just invite them. If they say yes to both of those questions, say, you know, I'm inviting you to come here and show yourselves, show your ship, come here. Uh, and since you're a telepath, I believe you will initiate. You, see, this is the thing we have to do. And I say we, all of us. 
we, I teach people, we initiate contact. Uh, we're the ones who are going to initiate the invites. It's like saying, if you don't invite your friend next door to the birthday party you're having, they're not going to come. You see, and that's a logical, it's like a, it's a hypothetical analogy, but you know what I mean? So once you invite the neighbor that you weren't going to invite to come to your birthday party, they come to the door, they come in and they join all the other people at your birthday party. But if no one gets invited, no one's going to come. Same thing with the space people. They're waiting for an invitation to come to you, you know, and they will. And the dog knows that, (laughs) you know. That's a very loving dog. I, the energy of that dog is beautiful. You got a beautiful dog, yeah. you know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's there. You go. So you know, if you if you invite them, ask them first of all, do they operate in the Christ consciousness? That's the first thing. You, any being that you kind of talk to, they have to respond to that. Secondly, invite them to come. Let, let them say, you, "Can you show me your ship? Uh, I'll go out tonight." I'll, I'll videotape you if you have a camera. You have a camera, so you can videotape. Videotape. I tell people, videotaping is really important. You know, hold the camera still. Try to zoom in enough so you can get a, a clear photo or, or picture of their ship. And um, I'm going to give you some more information. Yeah, you can do this. You can actually do this because you're a telepathic per- person. You have the abilities here. Some people don't realize that they are telepathic and a lot of people are, but they don't know how to access it. You have a natural born telepathic communicator and you already know that. So use your gift that you have and ask them and invite them to come and they will come. I think if you do that, I think within the next three weeks, you're going to the word three, in the next three weeks, you will document contact of the visual and invite them uh, to come out of their ship if they so choose. That might not always happen, but at least they know that you're not afraid of them. And if okay. you're not any fear, see, this is the thing they do. They operate and they communicate first. If there's any fear of them coming, whether they look like us or not, they're not going to physically appear at your door and say, here I am, because they don't want you to be afraid. You know, most 95% of the beings out there, the star, the star people, are human like us are very highly evolved and highly intelligent. And, um, yeah. So if you take these key things I'm saying, and hopefully it helps you. I hope it is. Uh, it yeah. will guide you to have more, uh, definitive contact with them, not just telepathically, but you'll actually make contact on a visual, on a visual level in the sky above you where you live. You live in a more remote area, like an area where it's yeah. open a little bit. No. Um, no. I'm on the outskirts of the city. Uh, so it's, okay. How, mu- it's how much area do you have? What's that? How much area do you have where you on the outskirts of the city? Do you have like a lot of light pollution or is it is it pretty quiet? Um, it actually is pretty quiet for the most part. We do have a lot of planes that go over. Yeah. Um but that's other than that, no. It's pretty quiet. Do you have an do you have an area where you can go further out that is away from the lights? Probably. Do you have a favorite spot that you can go to where there might be a field or something you can go to, maybe yourself and a friend that might be open to this? Hmm. I don't know about a friend, but I might have a spot. Okay. Well, that's okay. You know, actually, it might be better because it's for you. Find your spot. Go there. Don't be afraid to go there if you know the spot. Okay. And um, and just say, I ask that the Christ of beings of light protect me. And I'm here to make contact uh, with Fiona. Uh, or, what's her name? Pronouncing it Fiona or Fiona? Fiona? Philomena. The woman or the Philomena. Okay. And Philomena, is Philomena a male or a female? I get the feeling that it's female. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, so go to that spot whenever you feel comfortable doing it and uh, ask that the Christ of beings of light be around you um, and that your angelic beings, that there are always angelic beings around you anyway, that they are with you and you uh, can facilitate contact. Make sure your phone's charged up. So if they're coming to visually for the first time, communicate with you, you can now record it. And, okay. uh, but because you're telepathic, they can hear you mind-to-mind communications, you know. 
And one of the things you want to do is download, uh, you don't have to do this, but it's like $10. It's a, called the C5 app. We have an Ashtar Command contact group here in Connecticut that's well organized. And we have trained people on how to use, how to do contact. But beyond the app, I'm actually giving you information and protocol how to do this right on, on, the, on the broadcast. You know, so yeah. I think you're, you're naturally ready. If you use the app and you want to get it, it's, it's only $10. Um, you download it, read the protocol. There's tones you can use, uh, to vector in the spaceships of light. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do here. And, um, so I'm hoping that I've helped you a little bit this morning. I'm really happy to have you on here. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. I can, uh, kind of go and practice some of that stuff now. See, that's what it's all about. And you'll find on my, my show, which is usually light night, we have a great audience here and a lot of people are finding the show. Uh, on TikTok because it is a talk show. We don't go running around with uh, clown suits on, hitting people over the head or throwing eggs at people's faces. Right. The, you know, there's plenty of that garbage on TikTok. We're here doing a real talk show. I do radio in the morning on Sunday mornings on NPR Pacific Radio. So I'm, I'm, my background is news and broadcasting. Uh, and also um, I'm a cosmic teacher. I come from Mars. I'm here on Earth mission. Uh, so I'm in physical form. Uh, what people call star seed for new people here. And, uh, I'm fully awake and fully conscious. I don't read any websites or anybody's books. I don't need to. I always tell people, once you wake up, you are the book. Uh, and once you wake up and everyone will, I'm not special. I just happen to be awakened in that way. And, um, I'm here to liberate the planet. So we're going to bust the matrix. And that's what we do on the show. We bust the matrix, help people, help all the people around the world. And so I'm so happy that you came in here. Is there anything you want to share? Anything else you want to say about your contact experience? I don't know that there's any specifics I can really give. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just that I saw the being there. And okay, so I guess I got the feeling that they had their ship had broken and it was in the field mm -hmm. behind my house. And it had some sort of um, cloaking device to it so that nobody else could see it. But yeah. um, at one point I did see it and there was like all sorts of different lights underneath of it, but not on top wow. of it. Wow, interesting, interesting. See, wouldn't then, that be cool if you were able to videotape that, right? <laughs> yeah, it would have been cool. But it was um, probably a couple weeks worth. I felt like it was there and then it was gone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I saw it the one time. Yeah, so it seems like, and it can happen, sometimes the spaceships <laughs> that they have, have, uh, so whatever happens, a problem, maybe it was something else, but they were there for a little bit of time, and they came to your house, so to speak. Well, obviously, there's a connection there. Um, I really don't know who they are uh, based on the description. I'm not getting a whole lot on that right now. If I do the next time I see you, I will tell you. So I won't give you any information that's not accurate. Um, I just get, hmm, they have like a crinkly face a little bit, but they were not negative. They were very positive in your eye, correct? Yeah. And, that, and that's what counts, what you feel. So if you feel it doesn't matter what they look like, if they are showing a positive energy, then you go with it, you know? Yeah, I almost felt like I was there. They were trying to find help, but there wasn't really anything I could do to help. <laughs> yeah, they probably thought, can you help us with our ship? You must know. And they don't realize that you don't have the ability to do technical work on their spaceship. <laughs> That's right. probably what they were looking for, you know. Although, I mean, if they'd stayed long enough for you to let them come in, you probably would have had a, you could have said, sit down, I'll give you some water or something, and, uh, you know, I can help you that way. Would you like some breakfast? I'm kind of kidding a little bit, you know, but, uh, you like to, you like some, uh, Italian food, you know, or, you know, uh, who knows, but, uh, you know, obviously you are connected with them. And, uh, I think you're connected with more than one type of extraterrestrial being, um, being told by my contact, I have a communications with a being called Kadaramanka who's with the Ashtar, uh, Galactic command. I've been working with them before the internet. And uh, I'm a telepath. I communicate with him constantly. I'll sometimes bring him in directly to speak. Um, and he's saying, tell her 
that she is connected with like three different uh, galactic groupings. So I don't know who the other two groupings are, but he's telling me to tell you there's two other galactic levels of beings that you're connected with. They're all good and they're very, very high frequency. So um, when you do your telepathic communications, you can ask who are the other two galactic civilizations that, that I'm in contact with and they'll respond. And you okay. can do that in meditation. You know how to do the telepathic stuff. So for you, it'll be easier than somebody who's trying to do something like that. You don't have to try. You automatically are able to do it. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of ask in my mind, and I usually receive the answer pretty quickly. See, um, but that's yeah, a that's, beautiful thing. That's what I've wondered, as I've been in contact with more than just one contact. and Because yeah. when I try yeah. to speak in my mind, I get back mm. multiple answers, and yeah. it's it's all fumbled up. Yeah, so, you can have yeah, that separated. Yeah. You can just tell them, please, only one at a time speak, uh, and you need to set the boundaries on that because they all want to speak to you. And that's why I said, it's funny you said that because Kadar Manka said, you're, you're, you are connected with two other galactic civilizations. So now that you just said that confirms exactly what I was telling you. Yep. <laughs> That makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. And that's what I do here. I don't question anything I do. Uh, I don't listen to people saying, do you think you're doing it? Do you know who you're doing it with? If I start listening to those comments, uh, I won't because I have to go with what I, know, what I know when I came to Earth. I came here with a clear conscience. And I'm gonna keep, I always keep it clear. I don't get swayed by people's opinions, viewpoints, or whatever. That's why I'm able to help people. You know, so I'm so happy you came on here. And if you ever have, let us know how it turns out with the, you know, going into the field, you know. And again, you have no fear, nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Just be strong in your consciousness, be strong mm. in your cosmic spirit, and you'll do absolutely fine. You know. Okay. And Thank other people you. will learn from you who are, who are not where you are. You know, so you're going to get more generous. You're going to be downloaded with so much information in the next couple of weeks. I'm pretty, I feel like. Now that you've been here, they're going to download you with a lot more information. Probably. So you're going to have to process that, you know? Well, thank, thank you, you so for much. having and, me. And thank you for having your dog on the show, too. Of course. You know? There he is. A do beautiful dog. What a beautiful dog. <laughs> <laughs> you have a blessed uh, weekend, okay? Thanks. You, too. All right. Thank you. That was Shay 83. Let me see here. I can. Whoops. We did it. I think we did it. Here we go. And if you'd like to be on the show, this is the morning edition of Encounters Day. We don't have any background screens. We're in our meditation space room here. It's really amped up. And we love to have her on. She's just a great, great person. Nana Missy, welcome all the new people here. Please share and like. And also, we ask that you support what we're doing here on the planet by gifting. You can go to my Venmo account on Commander Alion 2022 right now. I have a Venmo link there, and please uh, make a donation, uh, whatever you wish to do on my Venmo. If you have Venmo or you have the connection to Venmo, use your Venmo to Venmo me uh, on Commander Alion 2022. Also, you can do gifting now. So if you want to send us a galaxy or a whale or anything like that or lights going through, we also love those gifts. Those also help the work we're doing. And Chesna, yeah, we can keep uh, announcing the Chesna, that's a good idea. Keep uh, mentioning the link to the Venmo uh, so people can go there because they might not know I have the Venmo account. King Jay, welcome uh, to our show. Many blessings. God's Hawks, thank you for the roses. We appreciate all those roses. Every, every gift counts here. So uh, please start gifting now during the show. That would be much appreciated. Uh, if everybody would do that, who can do it? God talks to Pastor Mike. Welcome. Thank you for the roses. Uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. John Connor, welcome to the show. Uh, Tab, all the new people coming in here. You normally see me late at night. Not late, late, late at night. Well, yeah, after about 11 o'clock with about 200 plus people in my nighttime show. So people don't usually see me on this time of the day. But we're glad to be here for a little bit. We'll be on until 1030. And then tonight we'll be on at 10.30 or 11 p.m. for our normal show. And if we have any other stories from people, we'd love to hear those stories from you. This is all about disclosure. 
about people sharing, coming out of the closet, and uh, everyone's respected here. Uh, that's the beauty of what I do with this show is we respect everybody. My Sunday morning show is called Ashtar Command Radio on NPR Pacific Radio, Cosmic Eye Radio, every Sunday at 1130 on WESUFM.org. Junbug. Well, that's a good name. Junbug. I like that. And uh, Carla, welcome to our show, our morning edition. So we're going to be on for another 15 minutes. We'd like to invite people to share their stories. Have you had any UFO sightings recently, anybody? If you have 200-plus followers, you can come on live here. Uh, Bill, a.k.a. Awesome Dawson, that's a great name. Uh, you can come on here and share your stories. The new thing with TikTok is if you have 200-plus followers, now you're able to go on live on a show, and we just can hear your audio, but that's good. And then when you get to 1,000, you can do the video. So uh, it's good to have you all with us here. Many, many changes are coming that, uh, that people don't realize, that there's a many, many things going on around the planet, a lot of things going on off the planet. And um, so people need to be aware of that. God Talks to Pastor Mike is going to be my guest, and we know God Talks to morning. Good morning, brother. I think you can hear me. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, God Talks to Pastor Mike? I'm doing good. Uh, I just want to good share. Good to have you uh, with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I love your show. I love what you're doing. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I just want to share. I want to share uh, about uh, six months ago. Uh, after work, I was driving to uh, uh, one of the neighborhood stores to get a cup of coffee and stuff. And while I'm driving, um, I see a, a Air Force jet uh, traveling at a high rate of speed. One of those triangular shapes. And then I hear, take a picture, take a picture, and I'm driving, and I'm like, well, I'm driving, I can't take a picture right now. That's right. That's right. So then I pulled up to the store, and I heard, take a picture, take a picture, and then when I took a picture, I was actually trying to get the, the Air Force jet, because that's what I thought I was uh, getting communicated to take a picture. Right. But then, uh, when I looked in the background, I blew it up, and it was actually two UFOs in the broad day. Wow. Wow. So and uh, if, you go, if you go on my bio, I got the pictures. Oh, really? I'll have to take yeah, a look at that. Did you, yeah, did if you, you go on my bio, you, you can we, take... Did you ever go think ahead. of, like, videotaping it? Well, I didn't even know I didn't even th uh, know that there would be a craft up there. Because it was telling me oh, to wow. take a picture, take oh, a picture. Wow. Yeah, my oh, communication okay. was saying, you. take a picture, take a picture. And I was debating, I'm like... Hold on a second. I'm driving. I can't take a picture. What do you want me to take a picture of it? And I had just right. glanced at, at an Air Force and jet. Take a, well, they're in a spaceship, and you're driving. You know, this is the thing that happens. They have no concept of what we have to deal with here. <laughs> so I you thought know, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, I had meditated uh, uh, way back in the day when I was med when I was uh, actually learning how to connect and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I actually had some, yeah. uh, uh, my son is the one that saw him. He was about 12. He's 40 now, but he was about 12. And he said he saw, uh, about four beans. They were, they were transparent, greenish looking, and they didn't yeah. have any legs. Yeah. He said they were floating around. Yeah. And he, he oh, told yeah, me, he told me, oh, please yeah, dad. Pop. Yeah. He told me, please dad, don't meditate no more. Cause that scared the heck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so they were well, floating around in the house. I want to tell you about those two spaceships that you saw when you're driving. Um, so I have some information. I get that, as you know. I'm going to close my eyes for a minute. I'm not sleeping, people, so I don't think I am. Uh, but the two beings that said, take a picture, take a picture, were part of a galactic group of beings. They wanted you to take photos of them to let you know that you're connected with them. I don't specifically know who they are yet. Uh, yeah. But I do know uh, they want to know, connect. They want they're connecting to connect. when, they're connecting when a specific group of beings group of ask beings you a question telepathically and they communicate that way. Communicate that's that because way. you're connected with that specific galactic group of beings. So what I uh, would say for you is the homework for you from the commander is to go back and you remember. You remember so clearly. Take a picture. Take a picture. You know, surround yourself in a level of light where you're going to telepathically ask. 
the ones that say, take a picture, take a picture. One, one uh, I wish to reconnect uh, with you. Two, where, where are you from? What part of the from? universe are you from? And can you tell me more about yourself? Because that was the telepathic message being transmitted to your consciousness. So that means you can retransmit back to them, whoever they are. They don't. They're not. Here, they're not, they're specifically, not here specifically, but your telepathic but your abilities, abilities will allow you to communicate you with them wherever they are in the universe. Telepathy, the has no telepathy has no limitation. And once people use telepathy, people use it's, telepathy just it's just unconditional in terms of where that information goes. That information so, goes. so you think so you can meditate and remember the take the picture, remember take the picture, picture voice and say, I wish to communicate with you. Yeah, I'd like you to do that. Right a little bit, about three months after that, I had a dream, and they were show. There were two uh, two saucer type crafts. They were show. They were showing themselves in my dream, and yeah. uh, my wife and my yeah. older son. They've kind of freaked out, and I was like, "No, no, no! Don't freak out. It's cool." But they actually uh, buzzed in and out of a cloud. Two of them. Yeah, and that was in a dream. Yeah. Well, that dream was a reality. Was uh, a reality. But you've watched uh, my show long enough to know that when I say. A dream like this yes. is a reality. Like this is a reality. When, you have a when you have a cosmic dream, it's really that you are left your body you physically your body intact. Physically you leave intact. the body, leave and what is a dream is a reality. So you're seeing them in another uh, frequency of life. So it's absolutely, completely real. Completely real. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna start practicing. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't sleep much. Uh, I sleep uh, three to four hours a night. Sometimes okay. I'll get five hours, okay. but that's all I sleep. But when I do sleep, wow. it's like uh, wow. I, I go directly to deep sleep. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. That, you know, so the deep that, sleep. You know, so, so when you sleep. when this so thing happened, when you call a dream, dream, I'm also getting your body could have you could have physically, could have physically have not been in the house. They could have beamed you up to an area where you would actually experience this. So there's two things going on here. Either you were taken out of your body. Taken out of your body into a, a different into state, a of state of consciousness or it was a physical was a physical, a physical, a physical manifestation where they were able to bring you out of your bed you of without you even realizing it and thinking it was a dream so there's a it's like there's two, or two or three different things three potentially things here potentially very interesting right very interesting. well let me tell you about my experience about uh back in 2001 okay i had uh, went to bed okay. i had went to bed like normal and then I found myself presented to Christ. And as he, I, I, I thought it was heaven. I figured it was heaven. As he walked himself closer to me, I just hit the dirt. I just hit, I landed on my face. And we had a long, yeah. drag out yeah. conversation with him. And uh, I kept trying to look at him, but he was too bright, brighter than the sun. I couldn't even look at yeah. him. Yeah. And uh, we had a long conversation. And... Um, at the end of that experience, I found myself sitting down at the foot of the bed. And when I looked wow. at the bed, the covers wow. were up. So I actually, yeah. he, they yeah. actually took my whole body completely. Oh, you're taking I, I had a long, a long, yeah. yeah, I had a long, long meeting with him. It felt like an eternity. And I noticed when I was uh, on the ground and we were conversing, I put my hand on my mouth, and I, I noticed mm -hmm. that my mouth wasn't even moving, even though I was talking. Right. It was right. Tele telepathy. It was tele now, I'm going to give you some yeah. information now, about the Christ you thought was really bright. Was really bright. When, when the Christ as a conduit, I worked with the Christ of consciousness. I worked with Christ as a conduit, so I don't do anything. Don't do anything. When I saw the Christ when come Christ into Christ my into visual consciousness, consciousness with a number of months ago, this is going back early part of spring. Um, um, when he came into my consciousness at the workshop to heal somebody in the room, it was a very brilliant uh, golden uh, orange, golden orange light. There was a, a form, a human form, but it was so bright that there was no facial features. There was no, no, no beard, no, no like long hair. Uh, how did you experience that situation with the Christ when you had that, you know, that encounter? Yes, uh, when uh, he had his back towards me, he was about. 12 feet away and when he turned around mm. I couldn't see anything and as soon no, as he won't. turned around no, yeah my whole body just hit the ground yeah you won't and, see uh, anything uh, people's yeah. perceptions and then he, of he, he, he actually he actually he actually walked towards me and I kept yeah. trying to look up yeah. and see but it was too bright all I could see was his feet he was wearing sandals yeah 
The only yeah. thing people the only people's thing perceptions people of Christ is that he has a beard, he has thorns in his head, he's on a cross. That's totally a misconstrued lie. The Christ is a very a very high frequency being, the highest frequency ever, and he you won't see any facial features. Yeah, no, not at all. And on, yeah, on my bio, uh, yeah, my uh, my son had had helped me make some business cards for a Bible study, because I get deep into the Bible study. People kind of freak mm -hmm. out and get scared. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, um, uh, when he made a, and I have the picture of, of of my business, one of the sides of my business cards before we actually developed the letters on it. And I told my son, "How did you find that picture?" And he said, "I found that picture of Christ, and I just did some stuff to it." And I told him that's interesting because that's the way he looked. You, yeah. He had no yeah. facial yeah. feet. His yeah. upper torso was just a super bright light. Yeah, super bright light. That's right. Super it's the light. radiant light. Yeah, the it, was, it was so. Yeah, it was so bright you couldn't even look at. It, it was about a thousand times brighter than the sun. There yeah. was no way to look at yeah. it. No, there's no way because his, his energy. What, his energy. Yeah, that experience say, changed my life. Say, yeah. When you have that experience, when, have which, that experience which, when I had it coming with the orange, with golden, the orange golden, golden brilliance of white into my consciousness, like it came into my body, uh, there was no uh, there was facial no features facial whatsoever. So whatsoever. what you're so, saying is what exactly, saying what is exactly what I experienced in uh, my workshop. And, uh, and, um, um, and um, so there's the, so, so when everybody the, sees so the cosmic Christ, I call Christ, Christ the cosmic Christ, because he's not from the earth. He oversees the Ashkar Galactic Command, all the forces of white, he oversees that. And People don't know that because we live on a planet with 3D religions, and that's the way they perceive Christ. But that is a miss. Um, it's not correct in what is being presented in the pictures of our Christ on Earth. It's not accurate at all, basically. That's true. Uh, I am a pastor, but I didn't go to a seminary or anything like that. They saw the works that I did. I did Christ works. In, mm -hmm. in 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 mm -hmm. uh, small churches and stuff, and they're mm -hmm. like, "We gotta ordain mm -hmm. you. We gotta ordain you." And I said, "I'm already ordained. I don't need your document." <laughs> but they did wow. give me a document, wow. and um, I, I actually became a pastor. And I'm like, uh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. a, I've always been a black sheep, so I go against the grain all the time, even with the preachers, you know. And, yeah. and in my spirit, yeah. I know when it's just like, "Boy, do you need to go back and study?" Right. You know, and the yeah. thing is, you I know, teach people is, since I come from Mars, I don't, I've Mars, read books, I've, I've been, been through different religions, different religions. Uh, <laughs> on Earth, and <laughs> in so doing, um, I did it to see what these religions are teaching people. That's part of the mission the command had me do it that's for a while. Uh, I didn't. I didn't uh, join I didn't, the religions. I, I just wanted to experience and monitor what earth based religions do. Religions so do. I try to teach so people. To teach once people, all the earth religions are gone, religions are gone and everything else, and people everything need to else. tune people in and connect with themselves, with themselves to the higher self, to the higher cosmic self of you. Like you have a higher cosmic self. I have one. Everybody in this room has a higher cosmic self. Cosmic and as they self. learn to they learn open the doorway to that cosmic self, that that's, that's where they're going to get the knowledge and the understanding. Yeah, um, I received an assignment, and basically my assignment is when the veil gets stripped away and there's no more church, so to speak, uh, to lead the people to the true Christ. That's my assignment. Yeah. So your yeah. light mission is so light whether you mission take it on in, that, in what you're doing. Can you, can you turn your mic off for a minute? Because so people say I'm, I'm not going. Yeah, turn turn the the yeah, mic turn off for a minute. The mic off for a minute. Okay. You have like a microphone. Yeah, okay, good. So then you can turn it back on after I uh, I have one more minute or two here. Is that when people experience the cosmic Christ, it will be a brilliant form of light and uh, a very tall being. So in your work that you're doing as a pastor, that's really only a title. You're essentially a, a being of light, a light worker, a star seed that's doing it that way. Other star seeds might be in science. They might be an English teacher. They might be a math teacher. They might be, you know, working in a drugstore, whatever it might be. So we're put here to do different things and have earth-based experiences based on those things, pastor, um, chef, 
a uh, person that, uh, you know, a car salesman or, you know, whatever it might be, uh, you know, male person, whatever it is. We're here to experience all that. But in truth, <coughs> we all are here to wake up humanity. And truly, that's what we're here to do. However you do it, as long as, as people are willing to wake up, I think one of the future things is eventually the Bible and all these other books will fall apart because so much has been taken out of these books from a cosmic level uh, of understanding that they're basically not giving people like uh, a real truth and a real knowledge of the cosmic galactic levels of light. So with that, I'll turn it over to you and then we're going to split out of here and uh, head out and then we'll be on tonight on our late night show on encounters. So go ahead. Well, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. <clears throat> and uh, the next few uh, months and years is going to be really exciting. Oh, yeah. Oh, you oh, better yeah. believe it. Oh, you better believe Keep it. your eyes to the skies, Keep folks. Your eyes to the skies, Have your folks. cell phones uh, tuned, up, phones, uh, tuned and up and be aware of what's happening aware above aware you, happening not in front of you, what's, what's up there. there. Look up the skies on the weekends. Whenever you can, look up. Always. Spend two hours looking up. Record things that are uh, the spaceships. They're showing themselves now. Maybe you'll catch some of them. Document where you are on the planet. So God talks to Pastor Mike. Thank you. And we appreciate you being on here, man. Appreciate you being on here, man. All right. Thank you. Hey, take care. Hey, take care. So this is uh, the closing of the show. This is my shortest broadcast, about an hour. On tonight with a much longer broadcast here. Uh, Ashe, uh, good to have you with us. Blessings. Uh, Riri Marine, thank you for being here. Please gift and uh, gift right now if you can. Uh, last minute gifts. We always like to remind you at the end of the show to do your gifting. It'll help support the work we're doing. Carolina Bear, have a great day as well and everybody out here. So if you can afford to do some TikTok gifts, if you have a bunch of TikTok gift options, whatever they are, use what you can do. Uh, let's do some gifting now before we go. This has been the Cosmic Eye uh, Morning Edition. Thank you, Jody. I appreciate the gift of the heart smiling. <coughs> That's our first gift before the show's over. I know we can do better. We have 41 people on here. So if you have TikTok gift money uh, and you want to throw the gift our way, whatever it is, the galaxy or whatever, just go for it. Don't even think about it. God talks. Thank you for the roses. That's our second gift. So let's see. Let's keep the gifts coming. Uh, who else wants to do it? Zag Fan 21. Good to have you with us. Mario will uh, keep looking at the sky. Very good. And we're also, you can do my Venmo at Command Rally on 2022. Become a subscriber. We have 29 of 100 subscribers. Some of our subscribers don't realize they lost their subscription, so they have to resubscribe again. Become a subscriber. Uh, do some gifting now, and uh, uh, we want to at least get three more gifts before we leave. Uh, matter of fact, if we get some more gifts, I will do something with one of my crystals here. Let's see which crystal will I use. That is the question. Okay, so if I get some big gifts, I'm going to use one crystal here that is really beautiful and amped up here before I go. So that means if I get one galaxy, whoever does the galaxy for everybody, I will do this. One galaxy, or it could be a whale or a seal or whatever it might be. But I have a special crystal here. I'm going to bless everybody before they go today. But I want to see one galaxy. And we're patient, so we're waiting for another minute or two to see what happens. I'm empty. Okay, Shay, that's okay. No worries. And not everybody has uh, a lot of TikTok coins. So you're good, Shay. Don't even worry about it. But somebody here does have enough coins. I know it. I sense there's at least one or two people with enough coins here in the group. So who can do some gifting? It could be a whale, a seal, a dolphin, whatever. You know, I keep forgetting what types of gifts TikTok has here. Or a galaxy. Any galaxy people out there? 
to give you a little teaser. A little teaser. But if you want to see the whole thing and have me do something, I need to have one person with enough TikTok coins to do a galaxy. Oh, no problem, uh, Marner. That's cool. You're cool. Everyone's cool. I no longer let me uh, days I charge my coin limit. Oh, okay. Oh, dude, that's cool. You know, you do it when you can. Those who do have TikTok coins unused, uh, whatever you want to do on that. Um, again, I don't look at my, my gifting things too much. So I'm going to do something here. And for those that do have a recharged TikTok coins. This is one of my other ET crystals. Uh, thank you, Marinette. I know you will. I love this crystal right here. This is a Lemurian starseed crystal. And these lines represent a lot of interesting things. Thank you. Yeah, it's one of my beautiful crystals. Uh, Mia, welcome to the show. Theodore. A lot of beautiful energy here. And you've been watching the morning edition of Encounters. We have to go, folks, so we will see you. And any small gifts that people want to do right now could be pizza pies or whatever you want to do. If you have any TikTok coins, please do it. If you're charged up with TikTok coins, that'd be great. All right, folks, we'll catch you later. It's been fun. Uh, tune in tonight to Encounters, the late night show between 10.30 and 11 p.m. Friday night. And again, guards Roth, thanks for coming here. We'll be on tonight, everybody. Be well. Love each other. We'll catch you later.